machine learning models on the edge? Of course you do. If you are one of the many Chalk Talk aficionados watching this video who wants to deploy machine learning models directly onto resource-constrained devices, you know the ones. The battery-powered sensors, the wearables, the industrial controllers. Then of course you know the multitude of challenges that go along with Edge AI designs. So. How do you go about balancing performance with a tiny energy budget and keep the bill of materials low? Well, you're going to want to leverage specialized hardware and optimized software tools to bring the power of AI right to the edge, making it both practical and affordable. All right, let's get started. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Miguel Castro from ST Microelectronics and I explore how you can jumpstart the evaluation, prototyping, and design of your next Edge AI application. Miguel and I also investigate the details of the cost-effective and lower-power Edge AI solutions from ST Microelectronics and how the tools, ecosystem, and the ST Microelectronics suite of MCUs are enabling sophisticated AI inference right on the device. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from ST Microelectronics. Hi, Miguel. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. It's very nice being here with you to talk today about this topic that is really important for me. Excellent. Okay, so Miguel, we're talking about edge AI today. So what do you think are the biggest challenges in this space? And what specific issues are your customers looking to fix? It's now more than 10 years that we started ST Advanced Research Program on hardware acceleration for uh, neural networks inferences. We visited many ST top tier customers and already some of them found microcontroller plus neural processing unit concept very interesting. But still at mass market level, let's say customers were not really ready and also staffed for these kind of technologies. Nevertheless, everybody was already understanding that once the ML technology would be more performant enough and capable to run on a small connected IoT device, then the adoption would be massive. Making this technology available on the microcontroller world, close to the sensor where the raw data is generated and could be transformed immediately on a useful information for a human or another machine at low cost and low power is the real breakthrough. So, now you probably interested by understanding what does it practically means. We talk about people presence detection with a low resolution uh, bolometer, like in the Schneider electric vignette that you see here. We talk about small, low power and low cost IoT devices that are capable to read a gas or a water meter remotely to get alerts when there is an abnormal water usage or a leak and without the need to send anybody next to the meter. We talk also about basic smart appliances such as a microwave or oven capable to detect the type of food inside and start automatically the right cooking program, but also industrial applications such as uh, arc fault detection in solar panels and power converters to uh, prevent these machines to get damaged and to just get fired. Here you understand the obvious benefit for the end user, but there is also a lot of benefits for our customer developing that application. Thanks to ML algorithm, it's easier for developers. They only need to collect data, while before that, they were needing a DSP expert to analyze the signal meaningful features and extract them. AI also made detection accuracies dramatically improved at the same time as reducing inference time. 
all these driving to a lower energy needs that are beneficial for cost of a product, smaller batteries, for example, and the total cost of ownership of the solution. So, Miguel, what kind of solutions does ST Microelectronics offer for these kinds of designs? The purpose here has always been to provide uh, tools that allow customers to run AI algorithms in the full STM32 portfolio. And on the previous examples, I was really talking about general MCUs, like without any hardware acceleration for AI. So for this, we first introduced the STM32 Cube AI tool to the map neural networks on STM32 microcontrollers so the customer could start benefiting from neural network technologies. The second step, we wanted that customer working on time series and anomaly detection problems to benefit from an auto ML tool. That was the addition of the Nano AGI Studio um, offering to the portfolio. Later on, we came with the ST AGI Dev Cloud. It is allowing data science to tear their neural network on any STM32 device without the need to install any ST tool on the computer. At the same time period, we also introduced the model zoo so customers could start their project from an optimized reference model. It is helping everybody to also understand basically what can you expect from the different STM32's families in terms of performance and application. So that's interesting, but Miguel, we're still limited to lower performance use cases, right? Yes, we are talking about software AI so far. So as you could see on this previous slide, in 2024, end of 2024, we introduce new MCUs with a dedicated neural processing unit to boost these capabilities. And therefore, with more performance come new applications such as more advanced audio signal mixing capabilities, better audio event detection with faster inference time and still keeping same accuracy. The boost provided by the neural processing unit allows new level of speech enhancement not possible before for the benefit of uh, various applications needing cost and energy efficiency devices, such as uh, smart home doorbells, uh, such as uh, audio headset for uh, construction uh, companies, or any kind of other uh, audio related application. But biggest breakthrough came to the field of computer vision, where Applications previously only accessible to microprocessors become now possible with microcontrollers thanks to the addition of MIPCSI interface support, an internal image signal processor, an H.264 encoder, but the most important was the neural processing unit. We are talking about use cases such as smart glasses object detection with sound and voice analysis, but also camera-based bike accessories for driver safety. These cameras being capable to detect cars, other vehicles like bicycles, pedestrians, and notify the user. User identification for appliances or home automation devices, or also like a registration plates recognition for uh, automatized parking applications. These are just four examples, but there is obviously many more. So, Miguel, how can we get an MPU-like experience in industrial and consumer applications while still utilizing the benefits of an MCU? So, the STM32 N6, thanks to these new peripherals we just talked about, but also its 800 MHz of Cortex-M55 CPU performance, and it's more than 4 MB of RAM, really opened that door it is bringing a smaller footprint versus MPU-based system. It is bringing lower power. It is bringing a lower cost. It is also a smaller bomb in terms of amount of devices that you need to have around the MPU. And also very, very important, it has a much faster boot and wake-up time than any microprocessor. So 
you understand that this new product introduction is a game changer, setting a new reference in terms of performance per watt per dollar, I would say. And for this to become a transformative wave, it needs to be accessible. Miguel, I'm really intrigued by the affordability aspect here, but is it still easy for my audience to start an AI-based project? These products are easily available at mouser.com. The Nucleos is the cheaper offer, of course, for prototyping, still allowing access to all the pins. The Discovery Board, that is bringing much more application-oriented with a camera that is embedded, the display, the Ethernet connector, the capability to have a microphone on board is a step up in terms of price, but also in terms of full application that you can prototype with it. It has an external, a large external RAM and flash. And of course, you can still buy the camera separately and connect it to the Nucleo, which is something very specific to the STM32 and 6. All right. So application examples can be really handy. So Miguel, does ST Microelectronics offer any application examples in this case? Yes. And as we say, like making it accessible, it means also making it easy to start with, like to have a an easy onboarding. So the customers, they are very happy when they get a kit to do not have to rebuild and to redevelop all the BSP from how do I acquire an image from that camera and put it on the microcontroller and crop it to send it to the neural processing unit and crop it at a different resolution because the ISP can have this possibility to crop images at different sizes and send it to the display or crop it at a different resolution and send it to the H.264 encoder. All these examples are already available on ST.com. So you have a basic example of people detection. You have an example of YOLO V8 used for pose estimation, but also hand landmark detection and really full end-to-end -end example from image capture AI analysis from any of these uh, neural network and use cases. And you also have an example where you can H.264 encode and video stream using a USB UVC class and see the result on your computer. There is also a package that has been put on ST.com that allows customers to do like measurements and get a software optimized like lean and clean for the purpose of doing a power measurements so customers can easily prototype that with some instructions on how to modify the kit to reach that, to do these power measurements. So Miguel, I know that from previous Chalk Talks that ST Microelectronics has a variety of partners in this space, right? Yes, and partners is a key element of the strategy because obviously we provide tools, we provide software examples, we provide hardware. Still, these AI technologies are uh, very new and our industrial customer or uh, consumer uh, customer, they have uh, several reasons to need uh, partners. Sometimes it's the first time they do uh, an audio-based application or a computer vision-based application and they need to get like a support from a dedicated partner that is knowledgeable on their topic. Sometimes they want to speed up a project, they do not have enough resources, so they need help from an external partner. So we qualified all these partners that you see here, and it's very important because some are experts on audio, some are experts on computer vision, some are experts on time series analysis, some are experts on graphics also. It's not only about AI partners. So it's very important from the image acquisition expertise, for example, to the AI processing that the customers, they find the right partner for them. So Miguel, given everything we've talked about today, what would you like my audience to take away from today's Chalk Talk? Yes, so I would say that technology has been maturing in the last 10 years. It's very important that Thanks to these new products being microcontrollers with neural processing unit, it become easier to access to this technology. The technology to be adopted 
need to be easy to implement and deploy. And that's why we have uh, so many solutions for the various scenarios, applications, customer profiles, I would say also, to help and to make it easy to use the technology. Because again, we talk about microcontrollers, it means cost efficiency. That's the most cost efficient solutions that you can have today for a AI solution. And this is also something critical for adoption. And once you list these three items, my conclusion would be to say that today, with all the evolutions that we see on the technology, the new type of algorithms, the hardware that generation after generation will get more and more performant. The key point today when it's about selecting AI solution is really to select the long-term right technology partner to make sure that it's not only at a T0 that you have a solution, but that you have a partner that will be capable to follow this wave, eh, to follow the progress of the technology. Excellent. Well, Miguel, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Amelia. It was a pleasure. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from ST Microelectronics. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.